Under the installation tab on the Robot Teach Pendant, we can find the safety configuration menu, which allows us to set up all of the different aspects of the robot safety system. Now, this whole robot safety system is certified by TUF Nord according to ISO 13849 2008 to be performance level D, meaning that the whole system is very reliable. There are a number of resources available to assist you in configuring this system. For example, ISO TS15066 is a set of guidelines to setting up a collaborative robot application. So that document can help you in selecting the right configuration for this system to make your application safe. From the general limits tab of the safety configuration menu, I can adjust the robot's maximum force, power, speed, and momentum. Either all four values together using this slider on the basic settings screen or each value individually from the advanced settings screen. And I can use these to make sure that the robot is safe to work around in a collaborative workspace. A traditional industrial robot requires safety caging to completely separate it from any human workers around it. But with a lightweight collaborative robot, the robot can safely share its workspace with a human worker. And we can also add virtual walls and safety boundaries in the robot's workspace to restrict it where necessary. So in the first example here, I have set up a virtual wall here, a hard limit boundary. So I have taught three points to set up a plane here and configured it in the safety menu so the robot tool cannot pass through this wall. So whether the robot is working in free drive mode like this, or when the program is running, it will never be able to pass this boundary here into this area of the workspace. So alternatively to setting up a hard limit plane, I can also use this plane here to change the safety settings of the robot. So I can actually have two different sets of safety configurations on the robot at one time. One called normal mode, where maybe the robot runs at full speed with less strict force limits, and one called reduce mode, where the robot works at a slower pace and has more strict force limits. And this is the one that you would use in a collaborative workspace, so where you expect the robot and the human to be working together in that same space. So what I've actually done now is taken that plane here that I had previously used as a hard limit and configured it to trigger reduce mode. So I've just made a, a small program to demonstrate this. And what we can see now is when the robot comes to pick up an object in the normal zone, it runs at full speed. But then as soon as it crosses over this boundary here into the collaborative zone where the human will be working, it slows down. So it is safe for the robot to work alongside the human in that area. Alternatively, we can use an external safety device to trigger that switch from normal to reduce mode. And that's using the I.O. channels in the control box that we're going to look at in the next part.